Welcome back to my channel. My name is Christina. You can also call me Radix Verum. Today we're going to be talking about female privilege and how it was recently exposed yet again. I think this is something that many people, many listeners of my channel will be familiar with. It's a topic I've talked about a lot. Um, but there was an experiment recently done that was posted on Reddit, which, by the way, we are boycotting because Reddit is for groomers. But the post itself is fascinating, and I think it perfectly illustrates female privilege. The idea that, like, white privilege exists obviously isn't true. Neither does white male privilege. So I want to bring this up and share it with you guys. So this comes from r slash true off my chest. Check it out. It says, I sent 100 applications as a man and a woman. It's much better being a woman. Yes. So I did an experiment. I work in computer science and decided to test what the gender bias is. So I took my CV and changed the name to a female name. I'd send it out with my real name, then a few days later or a few days before with a female name. Out of 100, my applications with a male name got seven responses for interview. Out of 100, my applications with a female name got 45 responses to interview. The uh, female resume was 650% more likely to get a callback. And the resumes were identical. So then I thought, what about someone looking for working class jobs? So I decided to focus on restaurants, servers, hosting, etc., made a fake resume, and responded to Craigslist ads with both male and female names. Sometimes the male went first, sometimes the female went first. Out of 100, my applications with a male name got 10 responses to interview. Out of 100, my applications with a female name got 87 responses to interview. That's out of a, 87 out of 100 is a lot. The female resume got 870% more responses. And I would like to say that this is probably due to a number of things. I think that part of it is um part of it is the fact that these companies, these employers get tax cuts based on how many minorities and females that they have employed. Um so there's but that's part of the incentive. And I think that also in upper management or management positions, the kind of people making these decisions are pro are probably men. And I think that for them, they want to see young, cute women, right? And I know this for a fact. As a woman who often had to do job interviews for, you know, office jobs and stuff like that, I think a lot of times you get, responses and you get called in for an interview so that they can look at you and see what you look like if you're a cute woman that is has a decent um has a decent intelligence level you're more likely to get the job over a male counterpart and i think that that's obvious um so yeah i think that there is a massive female privilege with stuff like that. It's called pretty privilege. <laughs> That's one way of looking at it. But also women are, um, I think, what is it? Like 60% of college students are female right now. So only 40% are men. And men are even are going to college even less than that. You know, with each passing year, it seems like men are just forgotten about and left behind and they don't even want to bother with college because they feel like it's just not there's nothing for them there and also harvard was bragging about uh this year how most of their um incoming students are non-white now so that's another big thing and people talk about white privilege all the time but it's actually the opposite um, you're discriminated against if you're male and white. And if you are a female or you're a person of color, you get special privileges because companies get special tax breaks and it, they have incentives for this. And same with colleges. 
uh, they get, um, I'm sure, federal money or grant money based on this. We just talked about the other day on my show, Digging Deeper, if y'all were watching this, uh, what Progressive Insurance Company is doing out of Cleveland and how they are running, you know, the, they're, they're publishing their metrics by like race of how many employees, the racial breakdown of their employees, right? And the gender breakdown of their employees. And then they created these like specific groups for different races and genders, like the, the Latinx employee group. Um, they call them, like, I think employee working groups or something, and uh, it's just, like, nonsense. It's kind of insane. And so there was also this one. Tinder exposes the dark truth of women and dating as a whole. So what I kind of want to say first before I get into this is that you have to understand that the internet isn't real life. So when it comes to these dating apps it's obviously going to be different than dating in the real world because the kinds of people that utilize dating apps are a specific kind of person. And I don't think it just is a, a female thing. I think this is applies to men as well. But um, that's always something that you have to take into consideration when you're looking at statistics on Twitter. That is not representative of the female population as a whole. It's the female population that utilize dating apps and not all women do. There is a lot of women who do not go on dating websites um, and never have. Okay, so it says that the nature of women is hypergamous. That the reason you're not getting any matches is because women always go after the man of superior stature. They always go after the man with superior looks, superior social status, superior income, superior everything. That only the strong survive and get the capability to breed the weak shall perish. So I think that especially with dating apps, women are far more likely to swipe left, right? To just, just based on pure appearance, right? Or whatever. They might briefly read your profile and then they're just going to swipe, 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 you know? Because they're, I think they're a lot more picky about stuff like this. And the thing is, is that the kinds of women using dating apps, like, what do you think they're using it for? You think that they're looking to find a husband? Let's be real, <laughs> okay? Um, no, and I think that it, 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 women in, in real life, if they meet a man and they get to know him, it does, he, he doesn't have to be the most attractive. He doesn't have to be tall. He doesn't have to be wealthy. If he has a good personality and he's a sweet person, and a really good friend women i don't know if this is a specific trait for women or what it is but and i've noticed this with myself the more that you like somebody as a person like the more you become physically attracted to them the more attractive to you they become uh and it's something that develops over time and can be an intense feeling of love and admiration or something like that but it takes time to develop. This is all superficial stuff, you know, and I think that people should understand that that's what you're going to get on dating apps. You're going to get superficiality. You're not going to get the kind of thing that you that you think. But I think men use dating apps for the same reason, right? They're, are they looking for wives? I don't think so. I think that men use dating apps for hookups. And I think that they understand that the kind of women, for the most part, on these dating apps are not wife material um and i think that they treat them that way as well so and, and i just want to say for the most part i think it's hookup culture is incredibly destructive for both men and women uh it, it goes on to say that the only reason you're not getting any matches is because women force men to play their primordial sex game where they are in control and demand you be a perfect man or else you are nothing but trash and equivalent to trash. Um, I want to say this is true. I've seen a lot of the young modern women going on TikTok, making videos, and even Tammy Lauren, where they say all men are trash. Um, and then it goes on to say alpha fucks, beta bucks. Only those of high intelligence and the ones who can see through the ape game females play are ones who recognize this as a fact to life. 
all others are those who are too dim-witted to see it for what it is and are stuck playing the female mating game like the dogs they are. The rest either abandon the game or are forced to abide by its rules. So I would ask what about things like game, right? Um, I've seen uh, some men who are not very attractive but are really good at like game. I've seen them get with attractive women or at least proclaim to. Um, so I don't know. Superior looks, money, status, success is everything. That's all that matters to society is how much you accomplish if you're a man. Um, I think that that's true for the most part. Men are seen as disposable and as resources or a walking wallet but not by everybody. If you're a woman, the only thing that matters is how beautiful you are. Your life is easy from the start. Facts. Survival of the fittest. That's not true at all. I had a really hard life. I grew up in an abusive household. I was homeless as a teenager, thrown out into the street. My mother stole my identity. So that was my start in life, starting out from the very bottom, in debt, Um, I slept on couches. I had to drop out of high school, so I didn't even have a high school degree. My life was certainly not easy from the start. It was nothing easy about it. I had to struggle and crawl myself out of that. I cannot even describe the feeling of having to sleep on a stranger's couch, having to take sleeping pills because I couldn't fall asleep because I had so much anxiety and I would have panic attacks. That wasn't easy, and I don't think I was beautiful, but I wasn't hideous, and I certainly didn't have it easy. So that's not true. That is a false perception that these incel-type men have where they assume automatically that women have it so much better, everything is easier for them. And that's just not how the real world works. That's a caricature It's not true. Just like it's not true that men have, white men have white male privilege and that they have it totally easy. It's as false as that is. And so, you know, in a lot of ways, this is right, but it's not reality. The internet isn't the real world. And I wish that these people would understand this. You know, it's easy to make judgments based on, like, a very limited window of people. That is not all women. Not all women are on these dating apps, and not all women treat men as disposable and as trash. A lot of them do, especially a lot of modern women, but that is not all women. Not all women have it easy. This is ridiculous, just like not all men have it easy. And I think that, you know, if you're if you're somebody who is... Like, what you need to ask, if you're a man, you need to ask yourself, what is the purpose of me being on a dating app? Are you just trying to, like, get laid? Are you trying to find a girlfriend? You might have better luck meeting somebody, like, in your circle of friends, or somebody who's a friend of a friend, or meeting a girl at church. And I'd ask these guys that are into, like, MGTOW and sort of male astrology, you know, (laughs) do you go to church? You know, what kind of woman are you looking for? Are you going after wholesome Christian traditional women? Like, what are you, who are you going after? Are you going after the kind of women who are going to treat men like this because of how they look? You know, do you engage in lookism also? I think you do. So, I mean, come on. Let's be real. Although, I will admit that for the most part, Yes, women are hypergamous, meaning that a lot of them are, even if they're in a relationship, if they think that a better man comes along that has more money or more, a higher status or is more attractive or something, yeah, they might monkey branch over. But not all women are like that. Not all of them. A large portion of them, yes. So, speaking of gender, I thought this was weird exclusive the gender card is being given out by local pediatricians to children in greater seattle in washington treatments can be given out to minors without parental consent including for reproductive health stds substance use gender dysphoria gender affirming care and more so this is the gender card they're giving out now this is what 
children can fill out to give to their health care provider. Look at this. What are you giving this to a child for? I mean, absolutely insane. A child doesn't even understand what a gender identity is because it's nonsense. Note on this section, the option at the bottom for children to decide if a healthcare provider can inform their parents. Oh my word. Why would children have sexual partners? They don't. This is all ridiculous. You could not make this stuff up if you wanted to. Note the link on this card to who is the provider of these cards. The cards, according to the Q card, empowering queer youth in healthcare, were created in conjunction with Seattle Children's Hospital. Well, that's lovely. Finally, here's the instructions for providers with links back to the same source. Note also on the website that the Q card project is charging $10 to $250 per card. Oh, so it's a nice money-making scam. Lovely. So that's just sad, guys. Uh, bringing it back to the beginning. Uh, yes, women do have it easier than men when it comes to getting job interviews, not necessarily getting jobs and not necessarily having um, a higher salary. It depends, I think, on the the person and the job. But I do think that, yeah, they have an easier time getting their foot in the door, getting the interview, not necessarily getting hired. Um, but there are quotas that I think are wrong. I think we should go back to being a merit-based system. I think that would be fairer. But right now, yeah, there is a lot of female privilege. Um, and it kind of disturbs me. It sort of makes me sick. And uh, the weirdest aspect of this is what they're now saying that, like, men can be women, women can be men, and how they're pushing this on children. So, I don't know, maybe they're just trying to get rid of gender altogether or just make it this bizarre, fluid thing that anyone can pick, right? You know, it's just insane. So, I thought that was weird. But, of course, um, remember to boycott Reddit. Remember that Reddit is for groomers. Whee!